Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Danny Dolphin Podcast. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and yeah, if you haven't checked out the first and second episode, go check them out on YouTube. We're also on Anchor and Spotify, links down below, but thank you. Um, yeah, support this, uh, rewatch them, watch them, and yeah, let's get the views up there for this, and I can continue to do it, because I'm actually having a blast. It's a lot of fun just to talk about whatever, and yeah, have some fun with y'all, but just remember, I'm just giving my opinions, my honest opinions on how I feel and my perspective. You don't have to agree, and you shouldn't have to agree. It's just about, you know, sharing my thoughts, and yeah, getting into this stuff, and yeah, on culture, um, toys, and a whole bunch of things, but I'm really having a blast doing this, and yeah, I'd love to see this grow and maybe help out the channel a bit more, but yeah, we'll be definitely jumping in some Q&As right away, um, some anniversary uh, Transformers releases, some Generation Selects, we'll talk about the new Nintendo Switch Lite, some new Amiibos, uh, something about Toys R Us, and yeah, maybe a couple other topics for sure in there, uh, maybe a VHS and Memories, and yeah, thank you for being here, hope well, everyone's doing good, and yeah, it's been a busy week for me, and like I said, day eight now, the of time of this recording that I'm off my anxiety med, so yeah, a little rough still, energy kind of low, still trying to crank out regular videos for the channel, trying to make content for my other social medias, but yeah, it's a little rough, and you know, sometimes once I first dropped that stuff, I actually felt really good, and then kind of, you know, the decrease hit me, and a little bit of withdrawal, and kind of feeling out of it, and it's just a battle, mental battle too, because you're like, oh, maybe there really is something wrong with me, I don't feel right, but it just takes time, a lot of people like off this medication especially is one of the hardest and antidepressants to come off to, come off of, and I see lots of people saying that it took them a month, it took them months, it took them weeks to start to see the uh, light at the end of the tunnel, so... Yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on all that, but mostly all the content that's happening right now will still be happening. And yeah, like to get this out once a week, aiming for to put this out tomorrow on Saturday or Sunday. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. And yeah, hope everyone's had a great week. And uh, yeah, let's talk about some nerdy stuff, but we'll get into the Q&As right about now. And yeah, thanks for tuning around. Uh, thanks for tuning <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> We'll get into the first question now. Um, yeah, remember if you have any questions, um, ask, put them in the comments for this video, and we'll get into we we'll get into the questions on the next episode, so episode four. But yeah, um, yeah, leave your questions down below. I like the questions because it makes me talk about topics I wouldn't really um, normally bring up. So it make it about transformers, toys, video games, being trans, whichever, past, future. Let me know and. Yeah, I'd like to add it in. I think it really does spice up the channel. Only got a few questions this week, but yeah, Steve Green asks, in a fight, who would win, Mario, Starscream, or Eminem? Well, if it was a rap battle, <laughs> I'd probably be Eminem, because Mario would just be like, Mario, Mario. Matter of fact, I'm coming out of your Stario, Stario, <laughs> and Starscream. <laughs> but yeah, in an actual battle, I mean, Eminem's just a human, so he'd probably like get killed. And, you know, Mario does have superpower, so it would probably be a pretty intense battle between Mario and Starscream. I mean, just depending on like what would happen, but um, I don't know. It's a tough one. Maybe Starscream, maybe Mario. It just depends. <laughs> I think I'd maybe put my money on Starscream, because if he just uses lasers on him and could shoot Mario, um, you know, Mario would probably be destroyed, but Mario also could probably do, like, a super crazy, powerful uppercut and smash Starscream's jaw and bust all his head in and all that, and then Eminem could make a song about it. <laughs> but very interesting question, um, yeah, it's hard to say, but, you know, it's Mario or Starscream, but yeah, like I said, if it was a rap battle, of course, Eminem, Starscream, and Mario, they don't seem to have the same type of rhythm, <laughs> Eminem would slay them in a rap battle, <laughs> but yeah, awesome question, Steve Green, thanks for always uh, asking questions, make sure to ask one for next week, and yeah, cool question, different type of question, but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Mario or Starscream will have that one for the physical fight, and Eminem if it was a rap battle, so yeah, thanks for asking, and yeah, next question. All right, let's check out Pumpkin Glow, go give her channel a follow. Uh, thanks for asking a question, Pumpkin Glow. Make sure to ask one again next week because you asked some pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I like your flow and everything you said about meeting someone in your 30s. Well, I'm 30, <laughs> still haven't met anyone, but 
yeah, I know what you mean. It'll, it'll come in time. For me, I'm very picky, and I'm a lot to deal with, obviously. So, yeah, so the question is, what would be your fir- perfect nerdy nerdy date? <laughs> what would be a perfect nerdy date? Great question. Uh, I don't know. Just, like, I like to take things really slow. That's why I like, you know, dating women over men. Because the women, like, they're not trying to be too physical right away, and I like that. It's like, I'd like to take things really slow. (laughs) But then there's other things about the ladies that just drive me insane now. Like, as a male, I could just block out whatever women were saying. Like, it was like a superpower. I was like an X-Men or whatever. I had this superpower to just block out women. They'd be talking. I couldn't hear what they were saying. It was, like, awesome. But now, like, with the estrogen and when the women talk, it's like... It's like, I'm going to flip out. <laughs> They're going to find your head Monday, and they'd be calling me Ted Bundy. <laughs> and I wish it wasn't like that, but it just is now. It's a little hard. Um, but, yeah, there's things about both sexes that just irritate me to the max now. It's like, wow, might be destined to be alone. Or until I find someone that was kind of like my ex, like, that, like... But more so in the other light, my ex was kind of like, she looked like a woman, but she had lots of man, man ideals and wanted to be like a man. And it's hard to find that. And yeah, I just need to find someone like that, but that's like more confident with themselves, like actually wants to be the man. And I'm not talking about buying me stuff, but yeah, driving me around. I need to be driven around by my lover. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and it's just things like that. Like someone that's more confident in being that role, not going to shame you or be like, oh, I feel like I'm the man. It's like, well, you are the man, stupid. <laughs> but yeah, not to go off too hard, but I could go off on that in a whole nother direction for hours, but we'll keep that for another time. But uh, yeah, what would be the perfect nerdy date? Well, I just think I like to keep it simple. If someone was like, you want to go for some coffee and maybe... uh yeah, like you said, go take some pictures of some action figures in a park. That would be really awesome. If that was it, that was the date altogether. It was just a light coffee and, you know, walk in a park, take some pictures, maybe a little walk on the beach. And if we ended up getting some food or whatever, that'd be awesome. And I'm not looking for people to pay for my dinners. Like maybe we can just split it or whatever the first time and then go from there. But, you know, I'm not that person anymore. Expecting dinners paid for. <laughs> Uh, I was such a prince, S, as a male. Uh, it was terrible. But, yeah, just something like that, something light. And, you know, maybe a second date, same thing. You know, you don't want to go to the movies the first date or first few times since you want to talk to the person. You know, dates down the road, you know, just going to a movie is nice. And, yeah, like a dinner, and eh, walk on the park, like I said, walk in a park, walk on the beach, just like lighthearted stuff. I'm very lighthearted when it comes to the romance, and it takes me a lot of time to trust, and it takes me a lot of time to bond with someone, because like someone could say one thing, and I'm like, I'm done. That's what usually happens. I'm like, oh, I kind of like this person. Then they say one thing, and I'm like, I can't stand you, doc. I just can't. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. It's like, uh, there's a few, few, few people out there that I actually click with, like, on a relationship level, and, yeah, it's only happened a few times in my life, and it was in the earlier times, too. Now, it's different when you're 30, and people are 30, and they're into different things. Some people are wrapped up with kids and mortgages and life, and uh, it's, you know, me, I'm, like, I don't know, big nerd, a big kid i try to be responsible i try to be act like an adult nowadays i try to be more you know responsible as much as i can but you know someone when i went with them to a movie and i was like trying to put this sauce on my popcorn they like ripped it out of my hands like you are such a child you don't even know how to put this stuff on your popcorn (laughs) it's like yeah i guess i kind of am a quirky child i hate to say that (laughs) it's just like my mannerisms i don't know why i'm just like people i some people get mad at like how i like pour my popcorn and like just stuff like that it's really hard for me to connect with people um yeah i do connect like i said i do connect sometimes with women more but now like i just don't want to deal with a lot of like women and their stuff i don't want to deal with secret emotions like are you if someone tells me like i'm not happy or like i'm like are you happy is there something wrong darling and they're like oh no then i'll take it at face value i'm not gonna dig is there something wrong what's wrong you know it's just it's so overload it i don't i don't want to waste my energy doing that you better tell me exactly what's wrong right now so we can deal with it you know that's how i am now it's i gotta deal with problems head on I, i handle stuff like a man you know now i'm like you know, I am, I want to be the next Joe Rogan. 
<laughs> not the pack not even the podcast wise but the next like i want to hunt i want to i'm the man now you know like it's so funny i couldn't be a man when i was a man because uh but now i can take on more masculine traits and i feel like i can handle my stuff more like a man it's weird but in female form <laughs> I don't know. I think it, it, you think it's gender stuff, but just confident stuff, you know. And you want to be confident and being confident. And yeah, I have weird beliefs, you know. I don't even want to get into all my beliefs on this podcast. It's not even about that, you know. This is supposed to be a fun, nerdy, maybe some trans and relationship stuff like we're talking about now. But you know, my belief system is out obscure to people, right? So. It's hard for me to connect with people. I mean, maybe if I meet more nerdy and cool people down the road, I'll be able to connect with them. But I don't know what it is. I think it's just timing. Like, it's, you know, I'm barely just getting over my ex right now, you know. It's, you know, I've had so much therapy and breakdowns about my past relationship to a T. So I know, like, you know, that I should be over it. I got to try to get over it, you know. But I'm a passionate lover. I love to the end of time. If I love you, like... I'm probably going to be in love with you for the rest of my life. Like, I'm just like that. But it's hard to break that, you know, when people change. And I understand people change when you're in a serious, committed relationship. And you're, like, early, early 20s and late teens. Yeah, like, you're going to grow apart or feel like you're missing out because you're just with that one person, even though you love them more than anything. So it's just a tough road to be in. But, you know, we're all growing and learning and I'm bettering myself every day if I get off these meds and I actually feel good one day like I know something will happen I'll meet that person that can deal with me and you know in a relationship I have to be number one it's just like that so if someone else is like oh I'm number one it's like it's not gonna work doc it's just not gonna work I know that's not good and I've tried to work on things I'm trying to be better but I just am the way I am. You know, I'm so much better with women and men and friends as friends. Like, I'm great with people now. I can connect with people on so many levels as friends. But when it comes to relationship, I'm just stuck in these ways that are hard to change. And I don't know if they'll ever change. But I just got to find that person that fits in again. And, you know, hopefully they'll have some creative things. See, that's the other thing with me. I'm like, I like this person. But then they don't have nothing creative to bring. And I'm not talking about, like, I don't care if you don't have the best job. Uh, I just hopefully, like, you have a job. You can pay your cell bill. And, <laughs> and you're not, like, a heavy alcoholic. You know, if you drink once in a while, because I still haven't drank since February 2018. So I don't drink at all anymore. And, you know, um, if you drink maybe just once in a while and can control your booze, that'd be cool. <laughs> but, you know, I just, there's lots of different things and hard to connect with people. Yeah, like... You know, I have to be a certain way. And then, like I said, I don't care, like, what job you have. And as long as you can hold your job, you're not, like, a heavy alcoholic or something. You know, I think it could work. But I just find that, like, a lot of people, they don't have this creative side. And I'm not talking, like, they want to create and do all their own stuff. But can you help me hook some electronics up? Can you help me organize things? Can you help me, you know, do stuff like that? Clean my computers? Can you help me? Can you just help me in any way? You know what I mean? for my (laughs) goals and what I'm driven to do because that's a lot about what I'm about like so if you're just like all about you and like you know I'm gonna be doing this stuff I'm gonna be at in the lab you know that means just at the computer basically or hooking stuff up playing something getting something unboxed under the lights you know like I'll be doing this stuff so it'd be really cool if you knew how to move a light around because then we can hang out, you know, because this stuff does consume my life. I like how it consumes a lot of my life, and I would manage it. You know, I do see my sister and friends and, you know, work and all that and try to be social, be social enough. But my heart and passion is to be being creative. If it's podcasting, unboxing, making some other silly videos, thinking of other old projects to revive in the future, um, then that's me. But, yeah, first dates. I know that was a ramble and a jamble and a half, but, yeah, first dates – like I'm just kind of slow, a little hand holding, maybe a kiss or so. Like if you're really into the person, <laughs> yeah, movie, uh, coffee, uh, walk in the park, beach, Transformers, toy taking pictures, a little hand holding, a little gazing into each other's eyes, a little getting close, smelling each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm corny and I'm a hopeless romantic. I can't help it, but hey. <sighs> I just got to keep grinding away doing what I do, and hopefully I'll meet that person again. A new person to be in love with. But love, is it overrated? I think so.
Another question from a good pal, uh, Grub Gun. Make sure to go follow them on YouTube, and they're also on Twitch, so that'd be really cool if you could help them out and grow. But yeah, um, definitely says some nice uh, things. <laughs> as I always say, these podcasts are as dope as they get. And yeah, that was just one part of the message. But yeah, here's the question. So here's my question. Do you play any PC gaming at all? I used to exclusively console game, but I slowly went to PC, the Master Race. Now I hardly ever play my Xbox One, PS4. Also, are you going to stream on Twitch at all? I'd watch that. Thanks again for this, (laughs) Danny. As always, looking forward to whatever upload comes next. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, you really always do support me, and yeah, thank you so much um, for always commenting and yeah, giving your insight. It's also when people share what they think. I really enjoy that part of this, and yeah, the little community that we're building is a really cool one and very open-minded, and yeah, say what you say. Don't worry about, uh, you know, being judged. Just say what you got to say, and we'll try to respect everyone's opinions. But yeah, so do I play any PC gaming at all? No, I never have. Um, never have uh, very much at all. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I uh, wanted to get into PC gaming. I played on PC games at my friends' houses all the time. But my family, like, we just didn't have a computer for a long time. And yeah, they just weren't like, you know, it was just a hassle for people to set stuff up for us kids. And like, yeah, I remember back then, like, I won that Star Wars game. And there's a few games like that. But it was just tough. I don't know just yeah just wasn't what my family's about they'd rather just give me a console and plug and play right but yeah pc gaming does interest in me more and more now um just as everything is going online and yeah i play my ps4 but and i have an xbox one but yeah i just i'm not really into it as much as i used to be uh a few triple a new games that come out i'm into but a lot of stuff i'm just not into as much on the new stuff i find myself saying this i said this before but uh yeah find myself playing like turtles in time donkey kong country um some old uh, mario games a whole bunch of stuff like that um stuff i can just pick up and play like my 64 i've been playing some playstation one stuff um yeah i have played a little on my switch here and there but yeah as it goes for that um yeah it interests me pc i do edit on a mac i have a mac so and i have an alienware pc it's a pretty good one i use it to do some other stuff on but uh editing wise but uh, yeah it's just like i'm not that good on pcs like if something goes wrong on a pc i don't know how to fix it i am kind of dumb when it comes to pcs i just am so you know it takes me a long time to learn, and I, I just don't, I've always used Mac, it's just, I know people don't like Macs, and like, the quality in Mac has gone down after Steve Jobs' death, I can definitely say that, but I still know, like, how to find everything and fix most of my problems, because it's like, for dummies, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, PC gaming does interest me, I'd like to get on a PC, like, for some games that look really cool, and yeah, PC gaming would probably be where I'd like to go with the gaming, and then yeah, I'll probably still have a PC ps5 in that but i don't mind consoles like i was saying because they are just kind of plug and play and ready to go but i can see once you get into that pc world uh yeah you really would like it but like i said kind of dumb on pc so it's like the learning curve for me like i don't know what i'm doing on a pc it's like is this alien technology <laughs> i'm you know i grew up with Macs. even at my school we had max kid picks you know what i mean and those programs but yeah the old mac family <laughs> the old macaranian <laughs> uh but yeah and what else are you gonna stream on twitch well i used to stream on twitch like a few years ago three years ago when twitch was really big i used to like it but i don't know the thing about you i was growing on twitch a lot faster i probably have like three five thousand followers now i got to like uh, what i have now on youtube easily on twitch i got there quickly too so i mean yeah i was growing quick on twitch but i find the Twitch is, there's a lot of drama and, you know, people always fighting in the chat and then like you, like, it's just the more people come in and then like I used to like invite everyone to parties and that backfired on me and like people would fight there and so like if I ever got back into streaming on Twitch, I'd probably just do like once in a while, a few times a month and then yeah, not, not people in the parties anymore. It just, you know, I learned from a lot of my earlier mistakes, but and Twitch, the thing about Twitch that I didn't like about it, even though like you're getting donations, you think it's cool. I thought it was cool at first. It was like, oh, I'm playing a game, but 
yeah, I just, after a while, it was, like, weird because, like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting and playing a game for hours and, like, just talking to people. Like, it's fun and all, but, like, for me, like, I've always had a more of a passion for filmmaking, you know. Went to film school, worked on in the film industry, and I know I'm not making films on here. I'm just making short little silly YouTube videos and silly little reviews and contents and unboxings, but... For some reason, um, I like that more. Even if I'm not making any money, not if I'm not making um, very many subscribers all the time. Like, I have my high moments where I get a bunch of subscribers and I don't. But I just like to be on here. I'd rather just, like, make content, like, things with shots. And, you know, I just like doing it. It got me more into figures. Um, you know, it would be a good idea to stream them once in a while again on Twitch, um, you know, with the gaming content, and then I could get my gaming content flowing a bit more. I think that would be um, really good in the future, like, just... I think that'd be really good in the future, um, you know, have more of the toy stuff and, you know, reviews of movies and controllers and hardware and some gaming stuff still on here. But, you know, then I could majority like a few times a week, just jump on Twitch and do some uh, just regular streaming of a game. So, you know, it could be a bit of a hangout. And, you know, I have learned from my mistakes. You know, I'm not going to mod women anymore. That was the biggest mistake I ever made was modding women. <laughs> I should have known, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just things like that. I've learned, you know, maybe I won't have very many mods. I don't care. I should just let people talk trash to me in the comments. It didn't bother me before. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I am the master. I used to be the master of trolling. So, like, when people are like, you sound weird or you look weird. It's like, well, of course I do. Tell me something I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, so basic. Like, <laughs> when you're trans, people think they can attack you. But, like, they'll hurt your feelings with, like, things like that. And it's like, for me, it's like, no, man. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just like, it just gets like, you know, when you see it all the time, you're just like, oh, this isn't even funny anymore, you know, people. But, you know, when the good people are around, and I'm sorry I let my Twitch community down, but I just pulled back, you know. A few things happened here and there, and, like, it just, everyone was fighting and drama, this and that, and it's just, like, an overload. Twitch is definitely more of a lifestyle, you know. The thing I like about YouTube is I can just, like, hang out, maybe talk to a few people here and there online or on the phone, work on my videos, post them, interact with everyone. And, yeah, I don't know, there's something about YouTube, I find the crowd, like, the community, even though I'm not growing as fast, is, like, more committed, and people stick around for a long time, and that's cool, and I just think keeping up the YouTube grind is kind of more what I would want to be, but it wouldn't hurt to stream once in a while here and there, you know, especially on YouTube, like, maybe not gaming stuff on YouTube, maybe do, like, a hangout, I've said this, like, for a year now that I'm gonna do it, and blah, 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 but it's just slow steps once my health <laughs> is a bit better, and, like, I flush these meds finally out of me completely, and feel a bit more energy, and then I can start working on stuff like that, but, yeah, it's a constant grind, you know, I want to expand my Instagram, my Twitter, and keep doing the stuff, doing toy reviews, uh, you know, doing more video game related stuff, hardware related stuff. Um, I love this stuff, you know, I, like I've said it before, this is what I live for. I live for creating and yeah, I love to buy things. I love to, you know, I don't know, I just, I've always had a love for stuff and I, I don't value stuff at the topest level, like stuff is just stuff or whatever, but it's just fun to interact with people and talk about this nerdy stuff, you know, I love 90s, 80s culture, um, I like when people didn't get really offended, <laughs> yeah, and Twitch, yeah, I had a lot of fun on Twitch, I do miss it, like, I kidding you not, I do miss it, it's just like, when it just gets so over the top, like, when people just get so over the top and it just becomes like, you know, just kind of a bad thing. Like people are fighting and yeah, it's just not fun anymore. Why do it if it's not fun? And, you know, at times it was fun. I think that before I did it five days a week, um, like 12 hours a day or more. So like pff, I won't be doing that again. I think that's another problem. I did it tried to go so hard and do it like hours and hours of streaming and every day like maybe just once in a while is a good idea if you're trans and I see other trans people on there too now a lot more trans people so it's probably died down a bit but yeah it's cool to see actually more trans gamers more trans streamers and all that so yeah I don't know it's a cool thing and I gotta get into streaming on some stuff you know I've said it so many times like I've said and yeah, stream on YouTube, um, maybe stream on Twitch once in a while, on Instagram, just to get more presence and interact with the people live. I know people do like that nowadays, so that is one step I'll be working towards. But yeah, getting these new logos and stuff made is in the works right now. So hopefully I can get some shirts and little merch going. And yeah, then 
just keep expanding and you know gaming and yeah I look into the PC stuff a bit and a whole bunch of stuff so yeah thanks for asking <laughs> and yeah so much more to come uh, thank you for all your calling words as usual and yeah don't forget forget to go check out Grub Gun's channel that mean a lot to me and yeah there's a lot of character on there so personality so yeah enjoy and thanks for asking the question all right let's get into some transformers news now um transformers there's been some images for transformers 35th anniversary war for cybertron siege uh blue streak and sound blaster so far um these images i think they were found on ebay or something and yeah no word yet on whether these are going to be in stores or online exclusives but they have different packaging and yeah it's kind of cool to see the 35th anniversary figures of the siege line I hope they have these figures in the stores, though. I mean, it's fine ordering them online, but it's fun to hunt for them and get them in the store. So, I'll talk about Blue Streak first. Uh, Blue Streak, why isn't he blue? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people I notice say that. They're always like, why isn't he not blue? It's like, well, Blue Streak, you know, the definition of Blue Streak, something moving very fast. They traveled like a Blue Streak. It also can be used in speech, you know, when people have rapid and um, nonstop speech. But, yeah. You know, it was so fast it traveled like a blue streak through Italy is an example Google will give us. But yeah, I mean, that's it's just a phrase, a noun, you know. It's not supposed to be taken literal. It's not about it's not his, about his color. It's just about how fast he is. And yeah, this figure looks really cool. Uh, very G1 reminisce. Uh, it's obviously just the side swipe mold change. But yeah, I mean, I like it. Uh, yeah, I think I had a blue streak as a kid at G1, but it was so beaten up. It barely had its parts. I think its wheels were missing and stuff. But I still liked it. And it was cool to reflect on and see that old uh, G1 toy. But this one looks pretty cool. I like the red, the grays, the blacks, the amazing red packaging that it comes in. Yeah, I just Google this, uh, you know, uh, generations 35th anniversary uh, siege blue streak and you'll be able to see it if you're not watching the podcast on youtube but yeah it looks like blue streak it's a pretty good rendition of the figure and i want to get it if you know hopefully like i said they'll have it in stores or we'll be able to get our little flippers on it um you know have to order it online to get our flippers on it but yeah i'm not minding this figure pretty good decent job um yeah, it comes with two shoulder guns and a gun in its hand in the car mode. The Cybertronian car mode looks very sleek. It's a 14-step transformer. And yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to this guy for sure, Zs. So yeah, the next Transformer 35th Anniversary War for Cybertron Siege leak. Um, this one I'm looking more forward to than... Uh, Blue Streak is Sound Blaster. Sound Blaster is Soundwave after he gets remade after the G in the G1 uh, continuation in Japan. Headmasters uh, Soundwave gets killed. Soundwave basically gets killed. Him and Blaster kill each other and they get rebuilt. And he's like a new black version and has different tapes. But I guess some kind of grainy pictures of the box were uh, published on some Chinese stores and yeah, we're listed uh, Transformers 30th, uh, 5th anniversary sound wave showing a small image of the box and layout and yeah, you can see it, it has the same packaging as the uh, Blue Streak but um, yeah, the, on the back, you, the pictures are pretty grainy but you can see a sound wave apparently at, uh, this year at the... Uh, there was a glimpse of him at uh, the Toy Toy Fair 2019, but they might have had him on display for a short time and taking him away. But yeah, he does look cool. He has the gold around where the tapes come out. He's black. Uh, I, I am looking forward to this figure. This figure does not have a, strand, a strong transformation mode, but this black robot mode uh, as Sound Blaster looks hype. It looks legit. I li really like Sound Blaster. I just picked up an Encore reissue of Sound Blaster. Uh, recently from G1 so I have that in the package I'd like to open that soon as well because yeah I'm a huge fan of Soundwave and Sound Blaster and yeah I like uh, G1 um, Headmasters you know I'm almost through the entire series it's a series where I have to watch it a few times to like do any in-depth talk about it but you know I like it. Uh, it can be dry, and it's definitely... I've started to watch some of Victory, which I've enjoyed a lot more, but um, the Headmasters toys, I really like, you know, um, all the different Headmasters, Chrome Dome, uh, the Decepticon ones, um, you know. Uh, yeah, they had really cool figures. It's cool to know that Transformers was still going strong in that era in Japan, but yeah, the Sound Blaster, he has the red... Uh, or kind of ready orange 
tape where his tape thing is there's gold uh, around the outside but the glass is like a ready orange and yeah hopefully they'll bring out some of his uh cassettes too so yeah i'm definitely out of the leaks for the 35th anniversary transformers i am harsh super stoked looking forward to uh this sound wave and yeah it looks really good i mean this uh sound blaster he looks really good um basically comes with the same weapon and all the same stuff it looks like as the sound wave release but if you like sound blaster if you're a fan of uh japanese continuity and all that stuff yeah this is a must-have and yeah i really want this one of course i'm a, it, yeah i'll be on this as day one as as soon as plausible he looks pretty sick they did a good job here yeah, I know this isn't new, very new news, but um, Transformers Masterpiece MP19 Smokescreen. Um, yeah, I had to get this. I'm kind of slowly, like I have some Masterpiece stuff. I'm getting slowly into the Masterpiece stuff here and there. Um, yeah, I really like this, though. I like. I know there's already a... a this is the second um, a re-release, basically, with a new head sculpt and different faces. The face actually matches more of the cartoon. This is like that Wheeljack figure. Um, you know, they are kind of matched more the cartoon uh, accuracy. And yeah, it looks really cool. He comes with some smoke screens. I've known people to call him uh, Blue Streak or whatever. So that's actually pretty funny. But yeah, this is smoke screen. And yeah, he's, he's kind of just like whatever in the cartoon. I didn't mind him, but... Um, I really like this um, masterpiece figure. Um, the smokes he comes with the you know the smoke that comes out uh, like a smoke screen <laughs> comes out of his uh, tires when he's in car mode, or you can kind of have it around his feet like you know kind of mysterious smoke. But yeah, he comes with the double guns uh, on his shoulder and a nice uh, gun that he comes with to hold. So and yeah, the pose that they have on this. Uh, thing on big bad toy store i'm looking at those pictures um i'll have some if you're watching the youtube version but yeah he looks cool they have him posed out really well um he's red and a blue and he has the yellow horns on his uh head sculpt so yeah um yeah he's really cool uh yeah i'm stoked on this guy i'm not like i've said i've always been more of a decepticon fan but i want a few autobots and i just thought he was a cool uh transformer to grab uh a new release i like these ones like the other ones that were uh masterpiece figures like the wheeljack i wanted the old one before that's more uh you know reminiscent of the g1 toy but i actually did order the wheeljack as well the new wheeljack that looks more cartoon accurate i was sold on that instantly wheeljack is one of my favorite Autobots. I always forget about him once in a while, but um, when I see him, you know, he's one of my favorites, and I've always liked Wheeljack. I liked how he was kind of like, you know, the weird, quirky, nerdy scientist guy, and his ears lit up when he talked. I always thought that was a awesome feature as a kid, but yeah, smoke screen. The smoke screen and that Wheeljack will go good together. Um, I think my uh, friend put in a reservation for me that works at a comic store so it's like yeah okay now i can get this guy and yeah a little heads up uh you know people are like oh i can grab this or put money down for you you know and you can pay him back and get get the figure that's super cool because yeah sometimes it gets expensive ordering these masterpiece figures <laughs> but yeah it's pre-order it says estimate arrival first quarter of 2020 so yeah, he is a little ways out. Hopefully they stick to that. I know with some of these guys, it can be a little tough on the Masterpiece figures. People can wait years, <laughs> multiple years <laughs> for uh, some figures to release. But yeah, I guess he converts from robot mode into a Nissan Fair Lady sports car, if I'm saying that right. So that's cool. Includes the weapons, accessories, um, smoke effect parts, like I said, uh, to attach on vehicle mode or robot mode. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, the updated head sculpt. Yeah, the new updated head sculpt recreates the shape featured in the series as well. So yeah, and he comes with multiple faces. So he looks like a warrior. Um, this is probably, uh, if you already have the figure, this might not be a pickup. But that new head sculpt uh, and this added on smoke stuff, I guess, might be a sell for you. You might sell your old figure and upgrade. Um, like the wheel jack, I know some people were happy with the one they had. But some people were wanting to get the new one that's more cartoon accurate. So let's... You know, they might not be releasing new G1 masterpieces right now, but I guess doing some of the updates to make them more uh, uh, cartoon accurate is pretty cool. And yeah, I'm just stoked on Transformers lately, obviously, and always have been, but it's cool to get back into them as much as I have because, yeah, it's fun. 
another you know youtube like we were talking about earlier when i was talking about you know being on twitch and all that yeah it's cool to be on twitch and stream if that's what you want to do but it's mostly all gaming like where do you where else can you go to watch uh you know toy vids and stuff you know like lots of people have there's been shows on TV and they haven't lasted and there's been like that other um, you know toys from the past show whatever it's called right now I'm spacing on the name but oh the toys who made us or whatever but you know they don't put out enough episodes so people go to YouTube for that stuff and yeah it's dorky it's nerdy it's fun it's toys it's collectible stuff and yeah this is where you can come to find it and this is an awesome masterpiece figure um getting more into the masterpiece figures i think they did a pretty good job i do like to stay into the hasbro takara tommy uh brands i haven't ventured off into third party uh ones even though they were releasing that site clonus from fans toys that looks dope but i'm just trying to stay more in the takara and hasbro side for now i know like some of those third party ones are better but Eh, I just like the Takara and Hasbro brand and the kind of try to focus my collection. But yeah, this is a must have for me as I don't have this figure at all and I really like it. But yeah, is it a must have for you? Let me know. Do you have the old one? Let me know. And yeah, masterpiece figures. Uh, love them. <laughs> They're addicting. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> well, I had to bring this up, Nintendo Switch Lite. <laughs> I know everyone will be talking about it, but I just had to give some sort of opinion on it. It is kind of strange. I mean, the price point right now, I see, uh, you know, uh, American $200, I think. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that, yeah, it's an American. So, probably be a little more in Canada. If I'm thinking of that right, but yeah, there's the teal, the yellow, the black one, and yeah, this thing cannot switch, so it does not switch. Maybe it should have been called not switch. I don't know. Not a switch at all. I mean, I've switched more than this thing has, and that's not even a joke, <laughs> and that's sad, actually. I don't... I guess they just didn't want it because they didn't want people to like buy this instead and just hook it up to your TV, but it just doesn't really make sense. Switch light? You're not even switching at all, son. <laughs> but for that price, and I know this is probably built towards a younger crowd because a lot of the younger folks, <laughs> they just like uh, handhelds, and yeah, maybe your parents just buy you this first, and then you can get a Switch down the road. Of course, they have the Switch Pro rumors out there now as well, but yeah, it says it's compact, lightweight, um... You know, it's got the built-in controllers, uh, you can't, there's no Joy-Cons, you can't take the Joy-Cons off. Some games like 1-2 um, Switch and stuff like that that use the Joy-Con uh, motion stuff, you have to actually get Joy-Cons to use in those games, so you need to buy separate Joy-Cons. That's another $100, so you probably just should have bought a regular Switch. <laughs> uh, I just don't know what to think of this. Eh. It's just like, if it just had a different name, or I don't know, if it did, you could eventually put it on your TV or something, I could understand it, but this is just kind of, yeah. <laughs> and of course, it comes out in uh, September 20th, 2019, so the fall. I know this will be huge at work and for Christmas, you know, though a lot of people will be wanting this maybe instead, maybe they get their kid this to try it out, see if they like the Switch. And yeah, I could see collectors, even if they have the Switch, they might want to pick one of these up as as well. Then you could just use your Switch for at home or uh, stuff like that. And you could take this with you if you're on a plane or whatever. I like the regular Switch, but maybe you want this. I don't know. It's hard to say who exactly will use this, but definitely the younger crowd begging it for Christmas. I do like the colors on it. Like, I wish my actual sh Switch was like teal yellow or gray <laughs> it is gray but teal or yellow i do like the color on these guys that's really cool and i'm sure people i don't know if they can or how i'm not a big mod person i don't know much about anything like that but that's not my forte but i bet someone will come up with something to mod it so you could put it to your television and then nintendo will be very upset but i think this is just a thing to get out there get people into the switch if they can't afford uh, the other you know the regular price switch so this could get you into it and then if those pros uh launch maybe the regular switches will come down you can get another switch for your family and your tv and all that but this might be good just to test it see if you like it but i just think it's a bit odd as much as i'm like yeah it's kind of cool it's like the color of it and the you know it's aesthetic of it, it does look really cool but it's just weird that it does not switch i do not switch i stay in one mode but they still call me the switch bro <laughs> i don't know uh better yeah 
but it's cool like you can use it in multiplayer and it works fine with other switches so you can all uh, get together and play mario kart smash bro stuff like that access the uh you know the online stores and um yeah lots of stuff like that but it shows people really having fun with it and yeah i mean it's it, it they're gonna kill the, the 3ds i mean 3ds has been on its way out and dead for a long time but this will put the nails in the coffin so to speak for the 3ds i still get people asking me at work like why don't you have any 3ds games it's like well nintendo wants to bury that just like the wii u be you <laughs> but yeah, this will be the last little straw, and it's kind of cool, because then they can just make all the games, you know, for the console and for the handheld, it's all the same. I think that is better than coming out with different versions. I do like that part of the, you know, this just being a strictly the handheld, so this is filling that handheld market right before Christmas, getting everyone to jump on it, and of course we'll probably get that Switch Pro like everyone is thinking we will, but yeah, I mean, the boxes look really cute for this as well, um, there seems to be a... Uh, Sword and Shield exclusive one as well. Oh, which will be available in November on the 8th, 2019 for Pokemon Sword and Shield. That looks pretty interesting as well. I bet people really want that. But yeah, they're just the regular ones that, that come in the just regular uh, little box. Kind of reminds me of the 3DS boxes. But yeah, fun little box. I could see this being fun for collectors and all that. But yeah, it's just, what do you guys think about this? Definitely leave your comments about the Switch down in the bottom if you like it. Are you stoked? Do you want one? Do you think it's weird that it cannot switch and they call it the Switch? It even, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even lightly switch, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I said, I've switched more than this thing, but hey. <laughs> uh. But yeah, Sword and Shield, it'll be so cool to play that on the go and yeah, on your regular Switch on the TV. It's cool that mainline Pokemon game is coming there. And yeah, I guess this, like I said, it just cleans up the 3DS stuff will be on its way out totally now. I mean, it already was. They're already hiding it at my store so you can't find it or, you know what I mean? They don't want people to have it. We don't have any Wii U games. So yeah, that whole side will be over, but yeah, like I said, if you have a kid, they might be asking for this, and it might be a little cheaper a, a thing, so you could still play <laughs> games on your TV, and your kid just can be on their Switch, or vice versa, whatever you like, but interesting thing, <laughs> I think it's a little hit or miss, like, I just don't know what to say, but yeah, <laughs> I think that's all I can really say about it, I mean, Nintendo obviously has people hyping this up, looking like they're having so much fun on it, but if it doesn't switch, how can you have so much fun? I don't know. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned and like a good switch or two, but... <laughs> Anyways, leave your comments down on this one. I really want to hear from you guys on this one for sure, because I, am, I, am I totally wrong? I don't care. Tell me I'm totally wrong. Tell me this is the best switch you've ever switched on, but yeah, let me know if you're pulling that switch on this switch, and yeah, leave it down in the comments. You know Amiibo crazy! So yeah, I'd like to talk about some Amiibos that are coming out uh, from Super Smash Bros. Uh, the first wave will be July. The next batch is coming out July 26, 2019. <laughs> so pretty soon, um, there is Pokemon Trainer, who looks kind of like Ash or, uh, you know, Red. Not Red, but looks like from the original Pokemon. You know, it's just Pokemon Trainer. So that's really cool. And there's also Pichu coming out. So that is the transformation uh the evolution before pikachu and yeah they're both really cool i'm super stoked on the trainer one though um this batch with the pokemon that are coming out and the next batch coming out after that will be um from super smash bros ivysaur and squirtle and then there will be also an additional amiibo that day the legend of zelda links awakening to celebrate that so yeah these look really cute on um, the ivysaur the squirtle the pichu and the pokemon trainer though i'd have to say i'm the most excited for it the link looks pretty cool as well i mean it has that little cute little face and yeah it's for the new game so that's really cool but yeah way more stoked on the ivysaur the ivysaur and Squirtle and the trainer. Yeah, definitely my favorite. The Pichu's not bad. I don't have a huge connection to Pichu or whatever. Because, um, <laughs> you know, I grew up with more with Pikachu in that generation. But it is still a pretty cool one uh, to see. And, yeah, this set is nice. You know, I love my Amiibos. Um, I actually ordered these off uh, Best Buy. I saw that they popped up 
on one of my feeds that they uh, just you get your pre-orders in and yeah I might try to pick some up um, also that day on the hunt but just have these guys as backup in case I don't get them but yeah I love I absolutely love amiibo I know I've been a little amiibo crazy for a long time but I love my amiibos they do such a good detailed work like I have some of those takus <laughs> whatever they're called um, from PlayStation or whatever but they're you know, the paint jobs aren't done well and the plastic isn't as good. Like these Amiibo, that's the one thing I love about Amiibo is they just do such a good high detailed job. And I like how they add stuff to the game. I mean, it sucks when they, you know, in uh, Breath of the Wild, you have to use all the Link ones just to get the proper edition, like the proper old school, uh, you know, real Link outfit. So that kind of sucks. But, you know, when they don't, when they just unlock extra extras and stuff like that, that's really cool, but this Ivysaur blows me away. I love its face. I love the color of the Ivysaurs that they already have. You know, Bulbasaur is one of my favorite Pokemon, and Squirtle's up there too. Squirtle, <laughs> Squirtle looks great. <laughs> He's like um, balancing on his tail, and yeah, the Ivysaur is kind of like in a pounce with its vine whips out and stuff. So that's really cool. And the yeah, uh, Pokemon trainer that looks like Ash Ketchum. <laughs> Yeah, he looks awesome too. He's from the he's the Smash Bros. Pokemon trainer. So, yeah, these um, me I'm super stoked. Let me know if you're stoked on them. But yeah, I'm really stoked. I am <laughs> happy they came out. And yeah, it's nice to see some. Yeah, I think they said they're doing a po uh, some amiibo for every uh, Super Smash character. So yeah, that's terrific. <laughs> and there's lots of other amiibo coming out soon this year they want to get my hands on it looks like there's a whole bunch and they always do such a good do job they're fun to collect the only thing that sucks i know is you know on the day amiibos come out you know if you're not there that day when they arrive like you'll probably miss out you have to be dedicated you have to like probably miss out on work or yeah be in the mix or have someone out there like trying to get them for you and some stores only let you get like a certain amount like you're only allowed to take one of each or two of each or something but yeah, that's the thing. I have the rarity of these guys. I still have people coming into my store, like, freaking out. Like, why can't I find any Amiibos anymore for my kids? They want them. It's like, you're two years too late, man. <laughs> they barely stock Amiibos anymore. <laughs> but, yeah, it sucks. People don't understand. And it's weird that Nintendo makes them so rare. And, like, you know, you'll see these guys jacked up on Amazon, jacked up on eBay right after. And it sucks because, like, pe people that just want them can't get them because there's scalpers out there trying to grab them and sell them for a lot and that just kind of hurts the market hurts everything anyways it sucks but i mean that's kind of the amiibo game the amiibo hunt the amiibo dedication and they like to have them rare and stuff so but yeah the first batch will be uh the pokemon trainer and the pichu uh in july so this month the end of this month and yeah in september will be ivysaur zelda or zelda i just call them zelda it'll be link and a squirtle so that's really cool but yeah love amiibos want to get my hands on these cute little guys and yeah can't wait super excited um tell me which of these amiibos you're looking forward to grabbing and who's your favorite that'd be really cool do you collect amiibos do you not are you kind of into some of them some people try to collect everyone let me know down in the comments but yeah i'm i've been stoked on these guys for a long time i sometimes i don't pre order them but i just go and see if i can get them and if not i'll try to get them later but these ones i have to have i have to have that um pokemon trainer and that ivysaur and that squirtle so yeah uh pre-ordered these guys and yeah i'll be on the hunt for them as well and i'll definitely be unboxing them on the channel and yeah doing a slight review on them so stay tuned for that lots of stuff to come you know i love my amiibos i'm amiibo crazy Alright, thought this would be a cool topic. Toys R Us stores are coming back for the holidays. That's in the USA. Um, this is a few different articles I've read on it. So yeah, and uh, yeah, Toys R Us were still open in Canada as of now. Are the stores not doing as good and do they have the right stock? No, but I'll get to that later. But yeah, um, a few different articles I've read said uh, True Kids Inc. That's the company that bought Toys R Us. Um, you know, is looking to open uh, Toys R Us and Babies R Us again. Uh, apparently, the buildings will be only 10,000 square feet, so which is about a third of the size of the closed one. So it'll be much smaller. But they're saying they want to bring more stuff back, like they used to have like R Zone. Uh, not that they're bringing back R Zone, but they'd like to bring stuff like that back. Um, you know, having kiosks and more play areas like they did in the 90s. So they'd like to make it more interactive and 
yeah, if they have the good stuff, but yeah, at least it'll be a tough road ahead because, you know, 700 uh, stores closed by 2018, um, you know, Walmart and Target in the States have, they've ramped up their efforts to compete and take up the space, right? So, and of course the biggest threat of them all would be Amazon. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if they can get Toys R Us, if this can happen by the holidays, that'd be fantastic. I know the brand Toys R Us can survive and yeah, hone it in, make it smaller, make it um, more interactive but bring in good stuff like bring in the good stuff have the figures that people want and have lots of them maybe the gaming stuff won't be as big because gaming is just becoming all online but have the figures figures are becoming more collectible again people are getting into it you know it's not just the it's not kids anymore just buying it it's like adults but it's funny um that's where i'm gonna get to the toys r us's are open i go to toys r us a few times a week and we have them in canada they're still open but ever since uh, a year or two before they did go bankrupt um it just wasn't the same place as it used to be in the 90s when beast wars era was out and g2 they, it was full of transformers and the toys r us i was at they had every single new Beast War early, late. They had every single Beast War that ever came out uh, North America-wise, basically. I remember getting, like, all my street sharks there, except that whale one that I always wanted and never got by. Yeah, that sucked. But this Toys R Us, like, it was always stocked. Even, like, you know, 2006, 2000, yeah, before I moved to Vancouver. So 2006, um, good part of 2007, all of 2007, um... They, I remember them having some of those reissues of Transformers back in the day. That's when I got my Soundwave, uh, you know, way back. And I was so stoked on them. And I was collecting some of the first Chug figures that were coming out. The old uh, Classics line you know, with Astro Train and Hot Rod and stuff. And I was getting back into Transformers again in 2006. Not on YouTube or nothing. I should have been if I was smart. But I was just trying to collect them again, and they actually had good stuff back then, but a few years after they went, before they went under, it's been dry. It's Walmart is my major uh, thing to go to here, because we don't have Targets. I don't even have any comic shops or collectible shops in my town, basically, and yeah, there's none. <laughs> there's like one, but they never have new stuff, actually. It's like just an old place, but uh, it just... Yeah, Walmart, uh, of all places, is the go-to spot. And, of course, Walmart had the exclusive G1 re-releases, so I'd be going there anyways. But it's just like I go to Toys R Us, and the, the, even when they got the Siege figures, Walmart had that wave, like, weeks before. And then, yeah, a month, I think even a month before. And they still haven't even got all the figures I've seen at the Toys R Us. So Toys R Us has slowed down. Um, If they bring it back, they need to. I know Canada and the... American Toys R Us are different, but I just hope they uh, change the brand as a whole to hone it in, and just, yeah, I hope they get more stock again, more fluent, good stock, because the stuff they're getting now is, like, brutal, and, yeah, I can only go to Walmart, and then what costs me a bit more is if I have to just buy them online, which is always a downer with some of the shipping and blah, 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 it's just, and it's funner to be just collect them out in the wild and find them, and yeah, I just, the good days of Toys R Us. I used to love Toys R Us. I'd go there every Saturday. I know that sounds excessive, doesn't that? If my kid was like, <laughs> if I had my, my hypothetical kid was like, I want to go to Toys R Us. <laughs> I mean, every Saturday, I'd be like, what? <laughs> but yeah, we were spoiled, I guess. But, you know, we get to pick up. It wasn't like we were getting $100 items. We were just getting like, you know, a couple figures and that and this. But it kept us interesting. We loved our collecting stuff. My mom got us into that too, <laughs> spoiling us and got us into collecting, but it was just such a fun time. I remember getting all my Spider-Man figures from, from 94 and 93 and earlier, um, you know, G2 stuff back in the early 90s. Um, yeah, later 90s with Beast Wars, that was huge. I remember picking up so many Beast Wars figures and yeah, they had so many figures. They had whole, huge displays with all the Transformers and the Transformer sections were always like huge and they had so many figures to look at like now I go there it's like it's so few and like thin you know what I mean even at Walmart like once they get them in they have a few but most of the time like the areas are just so hollow now it sucks like it's just not the same like they used to have so many figures like why can't they stock them like they used to I'm not too sure but It was just an era of the times, I guess, the 90s. Like, more people were buying it, and they had so many things. But it was so fun to look at. And, 
you know, it's still fun today. <laughs> it's like weird. Think about, you know, still like going in there and tracking down the figure and now I can review it and talk with people about it. And yeah, it makes it all fun. It makes like, you know, I understand my life more. <laughs> my life purpose is to blog, blog and do a podcast about action figures. Because <laughs> I had so many as a kid. I don't know. It's not really, but it just feels like, you know, and all these like threads come together. You're like, oh, this was what I was born to do and I hope to do. You know, I want to create as much as I can. Like, I want to get this YouTube channel finally expanding. You know, it'd be really helpful if you guys share this and tell people about the podcast and the channel. And I know you guys, a lot of people already do, but I'm so thankful for it all. You know, that's all. You know, I'm so thankful for it all. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> I'm not, like I said, I'm not looking to have the biggest following, but it'd be nice to expand a bit more, get into the 2,000 range, 3,000. I know it's a grind to 5,000, so, you know, it's just kind of about that. That's the next mission, you know. The first one was get to 1,000, I did it. The next one will be get to 5,000. It's just a little bit, little steps, but it's nice and healthy to see the channel grow because I like to see lots of people come in and yeah share their thoughts i love more opinions you know and yeah people that love i found the transformer stuff the transformer and toy community is a lot i'm just gonna say it is a lot more accepting and less judgmental i find uh, from the gaming community i know gaming you got to be a tough guy sometimes you got to be the man but you know it's the toy community that i find a lot of people more accepting and they're just like oh yeah we're all just toy collectors we're all nerds so like yeah don't worry about it you know <laughs> like i said maybe transformers fans are used to things changing so they're not like oh whatever <laughs> transform <laughs> but yeah I, and i like that that that's why it's kind of shifted me more to that but like i said i still like gaming um i want to game more and do some breakdowns on some videos i still have some, some stuff in the works i've had forever but just need the boost of energy to film it and start cranking out these and getting a rhythm and more content um lots of unboxings for figures um yeah more movie reviews on the podcast um other reviews got to get some more hardware reviews i've got a kind of like a electronics hoarder um electronic hoarding video kind of an accessories video it's like a showing your accessories off with a bit of hoarding ex added together so hope you guys look forward to that that'll be out soon i guess that would be a, kind of like a satire on it um you know because i do love collecting and uh, showing this stuff is interesting you know people can talk about it but yeah it, it is a bit of hoarding and all that so i know there's some stuff like that you know <laughs> but it's just fun <laughs> And I can afford to do it, and, you know, I'm not hurting anyone or hurting myself, you know, it's just <laughs> fun to collect and share, and, yeah, like I said, like, to hone down, get, um, get more into, the, like, you know, the retro stuff again, and, yeah, I'm not chasing the new stuff as much as I once was, and I'm actually happy for it, I was like, oh, is it not good that I'm not getting every Switch game anymore, I'm not getting all this, it's like, maybe it is cool to take a break on that, because some of that stuff, you know, it's just to stay with it and get the views is like you know you think it's cool but yeah it's just i'd rather do stuff i really care about and like and yeah when pokemon and other games do come out on switch i will share them because there is some switch stuff i'm interested in i don't hate the console it's just some stuff pushed for it. i'm like kind of getting tired of already i'm like uh and everyone's kind of doing the same videos on it it's like okay maybe i'll just stop but yeah, I mean, lots of people are doing the same videos on Transformers as well, but I'm just trying to take my own spin to it, and since I'm getting a lot more positive feedback from it and more people following and liking it, the channel for that, and probably my passion is pretty deep for Transformers. I know, like, it just seems like I'll blue, like, but um, if you've watched the channel for a long time, I used to mention in my first video, it was like, I'd love to do something on Transformers, and I always had a few G1 figures in the background and stuff, so, yeah, I've always been a huge fan. I just... Yeah, I didn't know what direction to take it on on YouTube, and the podcast stuff helps. And yeah, getting into like opening the figures and doing some unboxings and close ups is really cool as well. But I know I'm kind of rambling now, but <laughs> yeah, this is what this is about. Sometimes it's good to have a little bit of a ramble. But all in all, at the end of the day, um, Toys R Us, if you're coming back, baby, <laughs> do us right. <laughs> Fill the stores. <laughs> and I'm not sure the connection between the Canadian one and the American one, but 
you know, I'm thinking if, you know, the American one brands itself, that brands itself a certain way, maybe they'll have to change the one up here or something. I mean, who knows if this is all going to happen, if to if the Toys R Us will come through <laughs> or um, if the Toys R Us will be opening. I mean, this is kind of like how I read it. It sounds like it's happening, but it is probably just a suggestive and yeah it might not be happening you know some stuff doesn't get off the ground but it looks like an honest um and hard try from uh true kids inc and i'd love to see a toys r us out there again doing their thing and uh, trying to become what they used to be in the 90s let's get into another vhs and memories today i'm going to be talking about rocky 4 i know that's kind of out there but i've loved rocky movies since i was a kid um you know it was a great time me and my sister used to watch all the rockies but we definitely love four the best i mean the first one and all that is definitely and the second one are definitely you know better movies at the end of the day but rocky 4 i know it's out there with its montages and you know basically like music videos in the uh, movie but you know what we loved it as a kid yeah we would just put on uh winter gloves and start punching each other and stuff and yeah it would just get out of control my family would be like what <laughs> i think i broke her uh hand or finger one time and then uh a kid that was six six got thrown like into our wall and smashed the wall like we had to drywall and stuff so I, I think at that point my family's like this is enough like no more fighting but yeah it was fun <laughs> and yeah we loved rocky me and my sister just watched uh, this Ro uh, rocky four um we recently watched creed uh creed 2 that is i haven't seen creed 1 in seen it once when the movie came out but i never really liked it and uh, number two uh, creed 2 i can just say was complete and utter garbage i thought like i hated how they didn't have enough of the russian uh the russian from the fourth movie uh, rocky four and yeah there's uh, just so much stuff i thought was horrible uh the russian is uh rocky takes on the russian in rocky four and it's kind of like apollo son creed is seeking revenge for his father and yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. I, like I said, I didn't like how there wasn't enough of the Russians in it. And yeah, I thought Creed, like, these game, these movies used to be about, like, manhood and stuff. And now he's, like, crying with his death wife and a kid and stuff. It's like, how, like, estrogen-filled is this supposed to be, I thought? Like, this is horrifying. Like, this Creed, what have we come to? Like, Rocky, that's what I was like. After we I had to watch it, we barely got through it. And, um... I was like, I don't even want to watch this again, so I'll just sit through it. And then I was like, I can't believe how bad that was. It makes me want to watch Rocky IV. So we just put in Rocky IV the other night. And yeah, Rocky IV, you got to love it. It has the, you know, slow-mo shots. It has uh, so many, like, flashy techniques for editing. And it's so shiny. And yeah, it's just a great movie. Like, it's over the top. But I like it for a Rocky movie. I like the fighting more. Like, when they were fighting and stuff. It is a great movie. So, yeah, I'll give you a bit of the breakdown. Rocky just re reclaimed uh, the boxing championship title in the last movie. And he's pl planning to slow down and just hang out with his wife and kid and Polly and a robot. But uh, Rocky's friend Apollo Creed uh, wants to do an exhibition fight with this, like, hulking Russian guy. And he's, like, a newcomer, Ivan Drago. And, yeah, he's a huge Russian. Like, he over powers these guys and he's just towering over them and he's hulking he's crazy he's blonde he's like his he's like a man of few words in the movie as well like he doesn't say a lot but he is just really intimidating he almost reminds me perfectly of like someone out of like dragon ball or dragon ball z uh probably yeah just like not a ton of personality but ready just to fight and yeah it just reminds me of dragon ball z this movie in a way too like the characters are really strong and rocky like i haven't seen this in so long this movie came out in 1985 a year before i was born so yeah rocky sylvester stallone he looks pretty young in this <laughs> he looks actually kind of cute when he's like washing his like corvette or car and his little sweater i thought i was like what rocky <laughs> but yeah i always loved these as a kid just for the fighting and like yeah the attitude and so yeah, so Apollo Creed wants to fight this Russian in an exhibition match, and they hold a, a press meeting, and the Apollo's kind of mean to him. I didn't pick up on this as much as a kid, but, like, I know they made fun of the Russian at, at this press conference and made him look like a fool, but, like, I didn't know the extent of it, so maybe this Russian guy, because they uh, fight after this, and, um, yeah, the Russian guy, like, basically kills Apollo, like, he just knocks him out, and, like, he, he basically gets beat to death. It's pretty scary, but... 
um, yeah, maybe the Ro- the Russian wouldn't have fought him like that if he j- if they like didn't make so much fun of him at the press conference and take him as a joke. Paulo's pretty much over the top confident with this fight, so you know they end the press conference and he plans a huge opening show before the fight. It, it's like the, you see the Russian downstairs with like all these cops and they like bring him up. The ring is being like raised up. And it's like a Vegas show, basically. It's like over the top. There's like people in planes and acrobats and all these dancers and singing. And yeah, Apollo come out and he's in this huge American like Uncle Sam hat and like, you know, kind of like jacket cape thing. And he's dancing around before the fight. He's burning up all his cardio. And like, that's what I never noticed as a kid to me. My sister were laughing so hard. It's like. Yeah, he, like, basically, like, he probably wouldn't have won the fight, but he burns up all his cardio, like, dancing and putting on a huge performance before the fight, and he's jumping around like he's, like, blown out on coke, and, like, he's like, yeah, yeah, and he's, like, putting his arms up in the air, and he's dancing all over the stage, burning up his cardio before the fight, and you see Rocky, like, shaking his head, and, you know, he's thinking, he's like, he's burning up his cardio before the fight, and yeah, it's ridiculous. He burned up all his cardio before the fight. Can you believe it? Like, I never put two and two together before. <laughs> he burned up all his cardio with this huge acrobats and dancing and singing and jiving and jumping. <laughs> it's actually really ridiculous. I don't know if that really plays part in it, but when you watch it again, I'm like, me and my sister are howling at this, like, burning up your cardio. And then he gets in the ring with the Russian and, like, I think he, like, hits his gloves on the top of the Russian's gloves, and they hardly budge. It's like he's just hitting cement, and, like, Apollo even looks scared, and he looks over at Rocky, like, just like, oh, no. And, like, yeah, he knows he's going to get whooped, but he's a man. He wants to go out like a man. He tells Rocky not to throw in the towel, and Rocky doesn't throw in the towel. That's some real bro-bro stuff, you know? So Rocky does. Rocky doesn't throw in the towel, and they go, like, two rounds. The first round, Apollo's basically, like, in a coma he's like no he's like almost in a coma it looks like he's like totally knocked out of it a few more knocks and he'll be in some serious condition that's what happens and he just tells rocky like don't throw on that towel don't throw on that towel and then rocky doesn't throw in that towel and he just gets stomped where his brain just gets rattled and he hits the mat so hard and it's funny because it's not funny but he hits the mat so hard and like there's all these reporters like 500 camera people circling the room taking pictures and they're screaming doctor get a doctor and like no doctors come like who wasn't someone sued like no doctors come and these people are like it's pandemonium the announcers and it's just like no one went to help and save paulo like where's the doctor like that's ridiculous but yeah i guess he dies and then of course rocky has to get back in the game He's got to revenge his friend. (laughs) So yeah, Rocky holds another press conference against the Russians saying that they're going to go fight in Russia this time. And this movie, like, it's just so over the top. Like, I just, I love it. Like, even if it was predictable, but it wasn't predictable for me when me and my sister watched it. Because we were just kids and... I don't know. I probably knew all movies all ended good, but you just like still had that tension. That's what I found in Creed. It had no tension. Like this had so much tension and the action felt good. Like even if it was in these cheesy shots and like over the top stuff, like I don't know. There's just something about it that just rings home and brings so much nostalgia probably and just I liked old flashy eighties movies. And this is one of them with like so many scenes. Um, so many montages and so many different scenes. Yeah, and like halfway through the movie, my sister went to get coffee, and then, yeah, this we went to the drive through. This girl's like, "What do you want? What are you guys up to?" Like, oh, we're just watching the movies and stuff. And she's like, "Oh, what are you watching?" We're like, "Rocky Four. She's like, "What?" <laughs> she's like, "I'm watching Star Trek." I'm like, oh, I never seen that actually. That's true. I'm a Star Wars, old Star Wars fan. Don't want to say I support Star Wars now in any way, but. <laughs> Yeah, so we got back with our coffee, so we finished it, and we loved this movie as kids. Like, let me get into that again. Like, we just loved it as kids. It brought out so many good memories. We liked fighting. We liked, um, you know, stories of struggle, and Rocky was always the underdog. You know, me and my sister liked that. My sister really liked that. She actually watched more of Rocky 1 and 2 when we were kids because it was more, like, romantic, but this one is just, like, about being a powerhouse and stuff, and it's only an hour and 31 minutes, and it goes by kind of quick now i'm like aw, but i like it It, they give it a 6.8 on imdb rotten tomatoes 40 percent and metacritic 40 percent i can see that like it's a straight up divide but 
you know, $31 million movie. <laughs> so yeah, Rocky IV. And then, so after the press conference, you know, Rocky uh, goes to work. Like, oh no, they go, they fly to, he takes Polly with them and that coach guy. And yeah, they fly to Russia and they train. And he, like the Russian, it shows like that it's cutting back and forth of them training. And the Russians training with all this like new technology and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Bikes to ride and, you know, all that new, uh, a all that new like 90s you know workout gear they got like 30 scientists monitoring him and watching his punch and blah 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 even though that's at the beginning too i think when they're just showing how powerful he punches uh, they have like 40 uh <laughs> i don't even know if it's an exaggeration it looked like 40 <laughs> doctors in the room but <laughs> yeah and then so rocky's training like hardcore he's doing like yeah, lifting wagons, and he even climbs a mountain, it shows him climb a mountain, as, like, the sun is nearly setting, so it's, like, and he's screaming, like, how he did on the stairs with his arms up, you know, all platoon style, but he's, um, yeah, he's on this mountain, and it's, like, you know, the sun's about to go down, it's, like, how does he get home, like, <laughs> I know in the movie world how he got home, but in that shot, it's, like, in the movie, you know, story, like, how did he get back, he just walked back from climbing a whole mountain, there's no tigers, he, well, I guess he would just punch them anyways, he's rocky but yeah so after the huge workout they go to russia and like they open it and rocky barely gets any applause no one applauds them there's nothing fancy for rocky and then when the russian comes in they drop this huge flag with the russian on it and it's like all over the top and it just like it shows the russian smiling kind of showing like here this is where i'm respected and blah 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 and then you get to the russian and rocky fight and like yeah it shows some rounds at the beginning the, the russians are actually beating a rocky up quite a bit rocky's taking a pounding but rocky can just take a pounding and he does <laughs> that's not so bad rocky can just get punched and take it and uh <laughs> you know he doesn't really get like knocked out he's still on his feet and conscious and like then it shows uh rocky kind of coming back and uh fighting against the russian which is really cool yeah then it kind of goes into like another montage sequence of like rounds going by and slow-mo punching and like some of the funniest punches ever to the face and all this slow-mo stuff like back and forth slow-mo while it's like fading over top of each other like you would never see this type of editing now in a movie, but in this movie, it's it's just classic, and they're going round after round after round till it comes down to, like, the last few rounds, and Rocky just kind of lets the Russian pound on him, <laughs> punching him in the face, and, like, body shots, and Rocky's just, like, taking it, like, and he's kind of, like, ends up tiring the Russian out at the end, and then Rocky just rattles him. He just goes in for the kill. He's like, okay, now you're tired? He's like... He lays into him, and he's, like, all inside of him because the guy's, like, tired, can't keep his hands up. And, yeah, it's boxing. Boxing's pretty cool. I've been a fan of boxing on and off. Um, I never watched a ton of pay-per-view boxing, and I kind of missed out on the whole Mike Tyson era. So, yeah. I mean, I was around, but I was just a kid. I was into Transformers and such, not boxing. <laughs> but, yeah, I wish I was actually into boxing because, like, this. But, yeah, in this movie, it's it's fantasy. It's whatever boxing. But, yeah, Rocky ends up getting the whole crowd to turn in love on him. Like, is that over the top? They maybe not have should have had that. Like, maybe a couple fans were like, Rocky, Rocky. But not, like, everyone. Like, the president of Russia or whatever they have in their communist country. <laughs> but, oh, you know, these people get up and clap for Rocky and everyone loves Rocky and like this Russian becomes a huge failure and that's part of crate too like you know so it's just wow <laughs> but yeah I'm glad that yeah you know what Rocky won I didn't mind that Rocky won though in this but um it was pretty interesting I wish they would have made like a Rocky yeah like in Rocky 5 there's the street fight and stuff which it would have been cool but it would have been nice in this to see uh Rocky uh It would have been cool to see, like, in another movie, these people guys meet up. Like, they should have done, like, a different Rocky, like, many years, like, in 95 or early 2000s or something, maybe. But maybe it wouldn't have worked. This has such, this is such over-top movie, over-top editing. Like I said, I watched it all the time as a kid. I am a huge Rocky fan, Sylvester Stallone. I do like some of the movies that he's in, especially these Rocky movies and uh, First Blood. Not a fan of, like, a lot of the other Rambo movies, but I love First Blood. That was shot, like, in Hope in BC, where, close to where I'm from. And, 
yeah, <laughs> it was cool. And yeah, I don't know. There's something about Rambo. And that was on VHS, so I'll have to bring that up. Not Rambo, but yeah, First Blood, the first Rambo movie. But that's a great movie as well. He just kills everyone with a knife and stuff. It's really sick. But yeah, VHS and memories. I mean, my stepdad used to love this movie. Um, my family watched it together many times. Like, yeah, it was just, you know, him. He got us into it, I think, as a kid, our stepdad. Like, I don't know if we would have seen it really without him because I don't know if my mom would have been bringing Rocky home for us, right? But or maybe she was a St Sylvester Stallone fan as well, but they both were, so yeah, makes sense that when they would have rented to this, and uh, yeah, we watched it too, <laughs> we're like, yeah, we love Rocky, 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 but yeah, this movie, um, let me know if you've seen it, or if you watch any of the Rocky movies, I don't know if there's a lot of people talking about Rocky 4, but I'll talk about Rocky 4, <laughs> I know there's a few, but yeah, it's just like, you're either into Rocky movies, or you're not, it's like Star Trek, you're either into Star Trek, or you're not, but great movie um i don't really know what else to say right now but i can't believe that i put that together years later that um apollo burned out all his cardio before the fight and that's why he basically got killed but yeah what a great movie definitely a great movie popcorn movie if you like old 80s movies Sylvester Stallone fan check out the rocky movies you won't be disappointed and yeah that wraps it up for a vhs and memory memories Hey everyone, thank you for sticking around and watching this podcast. I truly do appreciate it if you watched it all um, in the segments or however you do it, but thank you for supporting me here. And yeah, let's try to get this podcast to 100 views. Let's try to get all the episodes over 100 views. That'd really help. Make sure to like, comment, share uh, with your friends, share with people, the podcast that might be interested. That'd be awesome. Let's grow this. I want you know, the end of this year, the rest of this year to be about growing this channel. And yeah, I'm trying really hard right now. And trying to feel better um, day 10 or so off the meds so you know what I mean it's a little rough still but uh, yeah just trying to grind through and so happy to be making content like this finally and yeah thank you so much for listening I appreciate it and like I said don't take anything always too serious you know like I have my own opinions and mostly just you know a lot of I am sarcastic and a little bit of a piece of garbage myself but thank you for listening <laughs> yeah next week we'll definitely do this i might put these out monday now <laughs> i'm just trying to find the right day the weekend didn't seem to work for me so yeah trying about every monday maybe it'd be a good thing because you hate monday so at least you have something forward to look, look forward to anyways thanks for being here stay strong stay positive stay awesome and this dolphin might even catch you on that flip side y'all Bye bye <laughs>